If you've ever watched my channel before, you probably know that I am not a great artist. But as a game developer, I need to use art all the time to build the games that I want to make. So today I'm going to share with you something special. I'm going to share all of the best places that I get art and how I get art, what that process is like, how you can do it for free. And I'm going to wrap it up with, I think, my best kind of secret insider trick on how you can get amazing art for really, really cheap. So if you need art for your games, or you're just kind of curious what the process is like to get art into a game when you're a programmer and you're not really artistic, follow along and I guess just hit the like button and subscribe because I'll be doing a lot more of this in the future. So let's get started. But first, this video is sponsored by Cinti Studios, one of the leading Unity and Unreal 3D asset publishers that make super cool stylized art packs for game developers. They're running a sale at the moment on the Cinti store where you can get up to 50% off of their assets. Their asset packs are easy to use, great for beginners, and fun for prototypes and jams. And frankly, they just look amazing. Cinti has over 80 art packs with themes like city, fantasy, sci-fi, and many more. So no matter what theme you're going for, these packs will definitely help you make your game. If you want to check out their stuff and get some great deals, you can do that by simply clicking the link in the description. We'll also be giving away a coupon code in an email later this week. So if you want their Polygon prototype pack completely free, I definitely recommend you go subscribe to our email list where I also share a lot of tips, sales, updates, and much more. There's of course also a link for this in the description. Because I primarily focus on Unity development, the first thing that I always recommend people check out is the Unity Asset Store. It's got tens of thousands of assets, and you'll see that a lot of the places that I'll recommend later even put some of their assets onto the Unity Asset Store. It's a great way to discover new places for art, new artists, and to just find and well, get whatever it is that you need. There are tens of thousands of free assets and a lot of paid assets that are relatively cheap. They also have great bundles and sales. I always keep an eye on the asset store to see what's on sale that day, and especially around holidays. Keep an eye out for what big giant discount I'm gonna get with tons of great stuff for probably 20 or 30 bucks. So I think if you're a Unity developer, the asset store is kind of an obvious one. So let's move on to something that's a little bit less obvious. One of my favorite sites, and that's opengameart.org. This site is the first place that I go when I want some 2D art. If I'm building a UI or something else, I'll first check on Open Game Art to see what's available there, maybe use it as inspiration, or just drop it right into my games. They also have a lot of great sound effects and music files on top of a full library of 3D things. Now, all of this stuff on the site is free and available for you to grab and download and use right away. If you're gonna use it in a commercial project, just go over the FAQ and check the uh, license requirements. You may have to put in an attribution somewhere. But if you need 2D art or you need sound effects or music, this is definitely the first place I would recommend you check out. Now on the topic of open game art and 2D art, I feel like I would be doing a disservice if I didn't mention my favorite open game art author, which is this Kenny NL. If you go check out Kenny.nl, you can see he's got all of the same art that he has on Open Game Art and some more stuff available for free. And then there's a donation option too. I'd recommend if you use all this stuff, you love it, probably donate. It's more than worthwhile. The amount of stuff that he's giving away is kind of mind blowing. There's tons and tons of 2D and 3D art that's on his page just available for anybody to go grab and use. So definitely check it out. And I've got to say that I appreciate what he's done here and all of the cool stuff that he's made available to everybody. So far I've talked a lot about art, but what about when you have a character and you need some animation for him? Well, you've really got two options. The first is that you can jump onto the Unity Asset Store and grab some of the retargetable animation packs. I do that all of the time. But the second option, and the one that is really my favorite, is to use Mixamo.com. It's a site that I believe used to be independent and then was eventually bought by Adobe and turned free. A bunch of animations that used to cost $15 a piece are now free and easy for you to slap onto any of your characters. You can simply upload a character, choose the animation pack that you want, and download it, drop it right into your game. And if you don't have a character that you can use, well, they've got a whole giant selection of them available for you. You've got fantasy characters, sci-fi characters, and even weird, silly, cartoony characters just about anything that you need to put into whatever kind of game that you might want to make. And again, it's all available for free, which still blows my mind. So go check it out. All you've got to do is make an Adobe account. 
One of the things I've struggled with finding art online is finding enough to actually build out a full game. When you don't have a lot of artistic ability, it's hard to put things together and make them look right, you know, when you grab one thing from one set and one thing from another set and have it all kind of come together. That's always been difficult for me because, well, again, I am a terrible artist. But one of the tricks that I like to use to solve that problem is use a couple of my favorite sites that have big bundles of matching themed art. The first of those is the Cinti store. If you like low polygon stuff, they've got amazing sets of low poly assets that kind of match just about any game theme that you want. And they come at a pretty amazing value. A lot of them give you hundreds of assets for around 50 bucks, enough to build out a full game of whatever that theme is. The other site I like to use for full packs of themed assets is bitgem3d.com. It's a site I've been using for probably five years now, and I've got almost everything on this site downloaded at some point in time. They actually have an unlimited pack, and I've signed up for that to just get unlimited access to all of the art on there for a monthly fee. Something I would definitely recommend checking out, or at least go grab some of their free stuff. They've got a lot of really cool things, and they usually have some really cool sales too. Now this next one I wanna share with you isn't available all the time, but when it pops up, it's an amazing deal. And that's the Humble Bundle Game Art Bundle. Sometimes this pops up with you know 10 or 20 different art packages in it for as low as 20 bucks. I highly recommend that you keep an eye out for it or just sign up for the Humble Bundle newsletter and eventually you'll see an email about it and click on it. It is kind of hard to resist buying a bunch of games though, so watch out. All right, now let's get into the more advanced stuff. What if the art that you want doesn't exist or you can't find the right thing or you just need a couple new assets that kind of match along with a theme? Well, let's go over a couple of options that are available there. The first one that I like to use is Fiverr. Fiverr is a site named after $5 bills where you can go on and find artists or creative people to do things for as low as $5, but don't expect the art that you get to always cost $5. In fact, don't expect it to ever cost $5. There's still a $2 service charge. It's going to be at least seven. But realistically, you're probably going to be paying somewhere between $15 and $50 per art asset on Fiverr. If you find an artist that does things that you like on there, you're going to want to find their probably middle range package and check out with them. I always recommend, though, that before you hire an artist on Fiverr, you send them a message, let them know exactly what it is that you want. Make sure that they're interested in doing that, that they think that they can do it, and just see if you can get a quote from them. A lot of the time, they'll just give you a direct quote for a price that they think is fair for that asset. Sometimes it'll be lower than the price that they have listed for like their most professional package. So definitely check out Fiverr. It's a great place to find things. You will find that sometimes you just get back a terrible piece of art or you get nothing back. But most of the time, you'll get back something somewhat usable. And what I like to do is find two or three different artists on there and hire them all for the same job and then start rehiring the same artist again. Now, that same trick applies to the second site that I want to recommend for this, and that's Upwork. On Upwork, it's a little bit more complicated and a little bit for bigger projects. If you have something that you want to make that you're not able to find on Fiverr, or maybe it's more than just one asset, you've got a whole bunch of assets that you wanna make, maybe a month's worth of assets, Upwork is a great place for that. You can find short-term contracts as small as a single art asset, and that's usually what I'll do is I'll go on to Upwork, put in a job for building a single art asset, explain exactly what I want with a couple pictures of concepts, and then get bids in from artists who are interested in doing the project. So the way it'll work is they'll see the job that I've got up there. Hey, I need to go make this rocket launcher that's sci-fi themed or whatever. And then they'll say, hey, I'm interested in doing that job. I'll do it for this price. Here's some of my reference art so you can see what my things look like. And if it looks like something that's gonna work, then we'll just move forward with it through Upwork. And it makes it really simple to handle the entire process. I don't really have to do much other than check out through Upwork and make the payment. They deal with all of the other stuff on the back end of actually hiring people, especially hiring people that may not even be in the same country as you. So if you're interested in outsourcing, I highly recommend Fiverr and Upwork as just great places to look and find great artists. It's easy to evaluate an artist's work just by looking at it, a lot easier than it is for a programmer. And it's easy to find people who can make you great things that you'll actually like at a reasonable price if you just put in a little bit of work there. All right, now I wanna let you in on the secret. The way that I've found to get really good art for 
really, really cheap that really matches with my other existing art. So say you've bought some art on the asset store. Maybe you grabbed a couple characters and there's just not enough that kind of matches with that theme to go along and finish out your game. Or maybe one of the instances I had was we had a goblin character that was a knight. And then we had another one, I believe, that was a wizard. And we really wanted an archer and a rogue. So we grabbed these two assets off the asset store. And we were like, hey, what are we going to do to find some art that looks very similar to this and matches up with it? We could probably hire somebody to kind of copy it and do something similar. And then the idea appeared. Why not reach out to the asset store artist? So thought, okay, we'll email the asset store artist, say, hey, are you interested in making a couple more characters that match this theme and uh, giving it to us to put into our character and then maybe releasing them onto the asset store shortly after because it doesn't matter too much to us if you reuse these assets somewhere else and we're already using asset store assets. So is that something you'd be interested in? And of course, the only reason I'm sharing this is that the answer every time I've done that has been yes. The artists are definitely interested in that. You got to remember that the asset store artists aren't all making a lot of money. Some of them are making a ton of money, but a lot of them aren't all making a lot of money. They've only got a couple assets out there and they may be like looking for something to push and motivate them to make a bunch more. And if you're willing to pay them for the creation of the asset, so they have no downside to making it and then making it available for sale later on through the store to continually make money. It's a whole lot easier to, I guess, just make that purchase and make that deal with that artist. They also are more inclined because you're matching along with a theme that they've already got. So you're kind of, it's something that they know how to do and they may have already thought about wanting to do. Now these will probably cost a little bit more than the assets on Fiverr or Upwork would, but here you're going with an artist that you've already seen their stuff and getting things that match. Now just ask them for a quote, ask them for a price on it and see what they say. It could be amazingly low and you'll just kind of be blown away and want to jump on it. So definitely check out other artists that are on the asset store and contact them if you like their stuff, but don't do it if you're not willing to actually pay for their stuff. Expect that these things are going to cost again more than you would pay on Upwork or Fiverr for the same kind of thing. All right, so what about when you've got the art and you're pulling it into the game and you're running into some problems? Maybe the characters aren't looking right. They look a little bit strange. There's something wrong with the texture. They're not animating right. When you try to pop an animation onto them, they look all funny and weird. What do you do then or what do I do then? Well, I've got a trick that I think everybody should follow, but it's not the easiest one to do. And that trick is to know an expert in just about everything art related. Now that might sound crazy. It might sound like, okay, shut up. Like I'm just gonna skip. That's not useful advice, right? But it really is the way that I would recommend it. And I wanna explain how that happened, right? I only know experts in these different things because I happened to work with them and talk to them in the past. So I've got an artist friend who is great at 2D stuff. If I run into things with 2D or I wanna have some feedback on concept art, I send it to him and I say, hey, no, what what's wrong with this? What would make this better? Or what do you think of this? Just depending on the situation. Or sometimes I might ask them to just sketch something up for me. Like, hey, I need this concept. Could you please sketch this up for me? Another friend who's an amazing animator and rigger, if I've got a problem with the rig on my character, I will send it right over to him and he'll send me back a fixed version, tell me what was wrong with it, how terrible the other thing was, and I'll have a good working version right away. And the same goes for if I've got a problem with a 3D model, I need some help you know, optimizing it, making it better, or fixing some problem. I've got a great 3D artist friend, I've got two of them, who I'll reach out to depending on the type of art. Now, it's important to note that this doesn't happen instantly. This happens from just constantly talking to people. And from the most important part, helping other people when they need help too. So these artists are friends of mine who have run into code problems all the time too. And whenever they do, I do my best to help them out as much as I can, give them the advice or the tips or even write the little bit of code that they need to fix their problems. If you can return the favor for people, you'll find that they're a lot more willing to just you know, help you out when you've got a little question. That's why if I run into any type of art problem, I don't really worry too much because I know I've got at least a couple people that I can reach out to and have them help me or fix it or give me somebody who can fix it if they can't. But most of the time, the stuff that I need to get done is stuff that a friend can just knock out. 
Again, you want to make sure that you only give this or request these things from people who actually know this stuff and it's easy for them. Imagine you're, you're a C sharp programmer and somebody comes at you with, hey, here's this big Python script. I really don't know how to do it. Can you figure this out and fix it for me? You don't know Python and you've got to go learn that. That's a big, giant, tedious task, right? Same goes for artists. If you give them something that they're not really an expert in and it's not the thing that they specialize in and ask for help, they might say yes, but you're suddenly putting a big burden on them. So don't do that. Give them the tasks that are easy for them or ask them for the favors that are easy for them so that you're not making it harder on everybody and you'll find that you get really good results. And that, that's really what I... I guess, recommend and like to do when I run into those problems. If that doesn't work and I can't find anything from anybody there, the alternative is, of course, to just jump into a Discord chat or a user group or something similar. I, I like to have like a regular meetup or user group that I can attend where I could go ask questions like that. So I'd recommend something like that as well. Just start asking for help and meeting other people. And of course, returning the favor as well because the same thing happens in discord channels and everywhere else the people who are helpful and helping other people are much more likely to get responses and get help when they run into problems and get probably a lot of really useful help and make great connections so i highly recommend all of that and again these are a lot of really cool sites that i love to use for finding art there are a couple others that i use but this is really the primary list and what i would recommend so you need game art check all of these out but if you have a suggestion for something that i missed some really cool game art site that has some either good deals or just really cool art or free stuff that kind of applies to everybody um drop it down below and just share with everyone i'm sure there are a lot of them out there that i don't know about and everybody else would love to know also don't forget to check out cinti studios get up to 50 percent off their assets by simply clicking the link in the description below also, a special thanks to everybody on Patreon and all my subscribers. Don't forget to hit that uh, thumbs up button and subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Bye.